Gran Turismo 7 has been out for a few months. While it began quite rough around the edges, after the recent update 1.13, the car handling is finally in a place that makes a little more sense. A perfect opportunity to create a video I've been wanting to make since its release. Just how does Gran Turismo 7's driving compare to quote-unquote real driving simulators? Gran Turismo 7, of course, frequently refers to itself as the real driving simulator, so this is a great test to run, since by virtue of said claim, it should, by de facto, be the most realistic. Today, we'll be comparing it to two of the most revered and popular hardcore driving simulators around, Assetto Corsa Competizione and iRacing. These two sims, though very popular in and of themselves, drive remarkably differently to one another, so it will be interesting to see where Gran Turismo 7, the quote-unquote real driving simulator, lands among them. After we compare them side by side, we'll summarize our findings at the very end, so make sure to stick around and subscribe for more sim racing content. Also, my apologies for looking disheveled. I literally got back from the gym just before shooting these. On the upside, you can show this footage of a near middle-aged man driving fake cars and gym wear to your parents in case they think you're wasting your life with sim racing. Just tell them it's good cardio. Here we go. We're in the Ferrari 458 Italia GT3 here in GT7. That's a lot of GTs. This is our starting point. We're starting at Laguna Seca, one of my absolute favorite tracks, one I know implicitly well, one I know it has tons of undulations, tons of different corner types that really help push the physics engine to its limit. So I'm gonna show you the setup that I used for the car. Now I've put it on racing medium tires. That's kind of a closer approximation to what some of the more, let's call them hardcore sims will actually use. The hard compounds are more for endurance racing. So the first thing that I did was I increased the sway bar at the front by one point because the car, after the 1.13 update, has a bit of a tendency to snap mid-corner or sort of oversteer mid-corner. And we've taken the negative camber angle from negative three down to negative two. Now this is quite unrealistic to real life. In real life, you'd be running close to about negative four, but this is where Gran Turismo 7 wants it. So that's where we're gonna run it. I've also increased the rear downforce as you can see here, the 620 to help stabilize the car further during that mid-corner uh, situation, because as you'll notice once we drive around, the car tends to have a bit of a bipolar characteristic on and off power. So let's do it. Right, our first lap, and because it's 1.13, I don't need to drive this with traction control. Traction control will literally just rob us of time and add even more understeer to an already understeery throttle experience. So I'm happy driving without. Now, Gran Turismo 7 has a very simplified traction control model. Doesn't function at all like it does in the real race cars. So let's just get that out of the way. You tend to oscillate it between zero and one, one being the, the highest state you would ever really want to run it in. As you can see, a bit of that oversteer character, not too bad there, since we've stabilized it. A lot of understeer on power though. Exactly what I told you to, uh, what I predicted might happen. Bit of an oscillation between the two states there. Under, over, under, over. The feel of this car has changed quite a lot uh, since the 1.13 update. Now, force feedback. Pretty, pretty vague. Pretty vague, but enough to kind of get me to drive the car. It's in no way hindering my ability to feel what's happening when the rear's gonna break out. Now this turn's interesting. Not too bad that time. I've had to do a few snaps uh, in the opposite direction to stabilize the car throughout that, which is something you wouldn't normally expect from a GT3. Let's see. Maybe I've just kind of learned how to drive. <laughs> Maybe that's what's happened. Here we go. Whoa. Whoa, okay, that's not what I would expect. See, that's the kind of thing you would expect from a very simplified aero model, like the original Assetto Corsa. That's really not what you would expect the GT3 car to be doing there, especially after stabilizing the rear aerodynamically. We'll see what we've done here. Let's do one more lap of Laguna Seca and talk about the, the 458 Italia. So, why this car? I think it's one of the better examples of a GT3 in Gran Turismo 7. At least it was before the 1.13 update, so that's how I set it up. I also own the 48 in iRacing, and of course I have access to it in Assetto Corsa Competizione, so a very easy test to do. If Gran Turismo 7 actually gave us the updated car, the 48, of course be using that, but they haven't, so here we are, we're using the old one. Uh, with its interesting, interesting balance, we can see a bit of that oversteer behavior there. So it's, I would say it's broadly correct, broadly correct, but maybe not you know, in the finer details so much. It, it does this mid-corner oversteer thing, which just doesn't quite seem 100% right to me. It's a lot better through there now that I know what to expect. All right, we'll try the corkscrew one more time. I didn't call it the carousel for once. 
Of course, I've got Nürburgring on the brain 24 7. Nice. Oh no. No, um. See, that's. I mean, my line there wasn't good. Mm. My line there wasn't very good, but I mean, that's really not the way the car should have responded to that section. So, that's a shame. That was going to be a, a pretty, pretty decent time. Right, so that's Gran Turismo 7 in the 458 Italia GT3 at Laguna Seca. I'm very, very curious how it compares to the other sims in terms of overall cohesion, in terms of force feedback detail. I think there's definitely room for improvement here. Many of the instances where I felt the car slip out on me reminded me a lot of driving open public lobbies here in the original Seto Corsa, so I feel like the physics model is somewhere around about there, even if the tires act a little bit more predictably for me over curbing. Anyway, enough talking, let's move on to the other sims. We're in the 48 GT3 at Laguna Seca here in iRacing, the most popular online hardcore simulator in the world right now. Let's test it out. This is very exciting because iRacing, when I get time to actually drive sims, is my preferred sim these days from a driving dynamics perspective. They've made some changes to their time model recently that's just made it just, it's propelled it past R Factor 2 in the sense of driving dynamics, weight transfer, the, the way that the tires absorb the curbs. I absolutely love it. Um, what I don't love is the, the force feedback. So iRacing is well renowned as having the worst force feedback in the, you know, proper sim racing industry. And what you're also going to notice, very different to GT7, is we start in the pits. We start with fairly cold tyres, and I have to take it easy for about two laps until I can really push. But already, I'm feeling a massive difference that I can tell you about. So, the car just feels more responsive. I can feel more detail in the track mesh, even with the not-so-great force feedback engine, and I can just push the car. It just takes it. There's none of this weird snapping mid-corner. There's none of this where it kind of fights you sort of thing which is kind of more what you'd expect from a GT3 car. I mean, they're, they're made to work with you. They're not made to work against you. They're made for customer race teams. And so far, I can just feel it. And one thing you notice up there, as the ABS kicks in, the pedal work is so much more important in iRacing. You have to threshold brake. If you kick in the ABS, you're going to get a reduction in the, uh, the brake performance. You can't just slam on the throttle either, because you'll just spin. So it embeds good driving fundamentals in you as well, which is very cool. Not sure if I should push on this lap. The tires still aren't up there. Temp is what, 60? We, we want it close to about 70, 70 to 80. But uh, I don't know, maybe I'll try, I'll try. We'll see how we go. All right, brake hard at the three. Maybe it'll warm up if I ever drive. Oh, so good. You just feed in the throttle. And you can rotate the rear with the throttle. You don't get that bipolar sort of understeer effect on power. You can really push it out to the edges as well with that. Get it right to the apex. Just kind of surf the car to the edge. Feels very much like R Factor like that. You can really just ride on the tires. Oh, look at that. Just... It's just... You're one with the car. You just... Even with the bad force feedback, it just... It doesn't matter. So you would think that, you know, if I've said this before, you would think that it would be harder in a hardcore sim, but it, it isn't. And it's because the cars aren't made to be hard. Other than this here, oh, if you grab the sand on the inside there, you'll basically spin here. Here we go. This is the giveaway turn. Oh, look at that. Just push through it. None of that crazy snap. And again, no snap at all. Just push the car through. Car takes it. I mean, that's what the aerodynamics work like. Just feed in the throttle, rotate the rear on the throttle with the steering. It's a bit more F1 that way. Very cool. 121.7, we're a bit off our times in GT7, but I mean, it's remarkable how close these games are. All right, here we go. Almost, almost properly warmed up tires. And the more warmed up the tires, the harder you can push. Ever since that time model update, iRacing is one of those sims where you can just push. Look at that, look at that. Just surfing the car all the way through. None of that snap mid-corner, it just plays with me. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So if I had to compare it to GT7 from a driving... Oh, the tram lining effect on the curb to the right. It's trying to suck me off the track, which is what you would expect out of real life. All right, the corkscrew, here we go. Hard brake zone. Let's go over this. Don't go over the sand on the other way. Oh, that was an off track, apparently. All right, here we go. The turn of turns. 
Look at that. Look how hard I can push through in iRacing. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes, that's how you drive. I mean, that's what driving feels like in real life. Ah, oh, that's better. I can actually... I have confidence in my car. I have confidence in what I'm doing. It just feels right. There we go. Another mid-121. Now, I'm sure if you tweak it or whatever, it can get better, but that's beside the point. The thing is that the experience of driving in this title, graphics aside, sounds aside, the fact that it's dated as hell aside, the driving dynamics, I don't- I can't think of a single thing that this does worse or at the same level as Gran Turismo 7. It is just a straight-up upgrade, and it- it shows me yet again why, whenever I have any spare time, that this is the sim that I kind of sink my time into. So, very, very cool, very impressive. Um, a lot of attention has to be paid on the pedal work. You can't just slam the brake, kind of let the magic ABS take care of it. The traction control doesn't just oscillate from no traction control to one traction control. You get a whole broad range of settings. I believe a lot of people run it at about four on this car, which is what I'm running it at here. Nice middle ground. And that is basically iRacing, the 488. The granddaddy, Assetto Corsa Competizione, the king of GT3 sims in the Ferrari 488 GT3. Similar conditions at Laguna Seca as the other two sims. Let's have at it. So, ACC is renowned as being extremely finicky with a number of things. The first is tire pressure and temperature, which you're going to notice because mine are quite cold and quite under, so we're trying to get the pressures to about 28 and a half. No, 27 and a half actually, I think it is these days. I keep forgetting because it keeps changing with every new update. It's about 27 and a half from memory. It also has one of the least forgiving tire models in sim racing. So it takes a lot of attention to drive, there's a lot going on, and immediately the first thing I can tell you is that it has by far, by far the best force feedback out of the three sims. I'm feeling so many undulations in the road surface, there's so much going on. They recently upgraded to a 400Hz force feedback, so there's a lot going on there. You can feel every ripple on the curbing, the tram lining effect sucking me out wide as well. Much more planted than Gran Turismo 7, though still a little bit kind of wonky, but that's mostly because I'm on cold tires currently. So for about two laps, I'm not going to be able to do much of anything here. Oh, and you can see a big thing in ACC's bottoming out. It does not like bottoming out at all. Um, you need an astrophysics degree to know how to tune all the cars. So of course, I'm just running a... Not a stock tune, but just a lightly tweaked aggressive setup on this 48. Something I don't drive very often in ACC, so this is very kind of unnatural to me. Still, not too bad a balance. We're still getting enough performance to really talk about it. So getting up to the 27 PSI bracket now. Brakes are nice and warm. You can see the brake temp is a big factor in this sim as well. And the way that the brakes and the ducts radiate that heat outward towards the tires. Massive effect. So, there's a lot to think about in ACC. It's not really set and forget like GT7 is. I would go as far as to say that for me personally, this is the hardest sim out of the three to drive. It also probably models the least forgiving tires in GT3 as well. So there's not much pushing that you can really do. You have to really just textbook clean inputs. Less is more. You can really lean on the ABS here, though. You can really just kind of stomp on the brake, get over there, make this happen. Doesn't like bottoming out, but other than that, it's pretty good. Super stable through here, very different to GT7, even with the bottoming out. No snaps of any kind. Very different experience to driving the other two sims. Spiritually, I would say it's probably closer to GT7 than it is to iRacing, the empirical model, empirical time model. It doesn't use the same school of modeling as iRacing. So in some ways, it feels more similar to Gran Turismo 7 than it does iRacing. Now, our tires are almost up to temp, believe it or not. That's how long it can take. That's the experience we were missing in GT7. Starting with completely warm tires, and I, I struggle. I really do struggle mid-corner in ACC. I just don't know what the car wants to do. I don't know if I have the grip available to make the turn. I don't know if it's going to snap. It's as, as detailed as the force feedback is, it's not very good on the gyroscopic forces. So I, I very seldom do I know what the car actually wants to do. 
It takes a lot of rinse and repetition, takes a lot of laps. But, you know, some uh, or many even drivers say that this is their favorite GT3 sim on the market, so who am I to say whatever? There's definitely a lot more detail and a lot more going on here than there is in GT7. I mean, it's no contest in terms of the amount of modeling happening in the physics engine. As you can tell, it's also the one where I'm far likely to get the, the worst time. And that's ACC, the de facto king of modern GT3 simulation. So by far the slowest lap time out of the, the three sims. Part of that is because I suck at ACC, I don't drive it very much these days. Part of it is because the setups are so important to ACC, like so, so important. They can make seconds difference per lap. And the other reason is, I think ever since their recent 1.8 update, they have slowed the cars down by around about a second per lap there. They're trying to aim to hit the, the BOP of the GT World Challenge. So I think they're a little bit closer in terms of what the real world cars are doing currently compared to the other two sims. So you would expect it to be a little bit slower. So that's ACC. Let's sum it all up. First things first, is Gran Turismo 7 the real driving simulator? Sure, so long as it's simulating driving in an alternate dimension with different physical laws. One of the biggest departures from reality with GT7, which we didn't speak about during the laps, is that in real life you simply wouldn't drive a GT3 car without some level of traction control. They're literally made for it. GT7 clearly doesn't simulate this, with the best times and consistency being possible with no traction control. Both iRacing and ACC simulate this more accurately. Likewise, GT7 has a highly simplified quote-unquote magic ABS system when set to default. Threshold braking isn't really a thing and you simply pound the pedal down then release it as you want to trail brake into the corners. We also get the mid-corner handling departure from the other two sims. Both iRacing and ACC are grounded during the penultimate corners of the track, while in GT7 the car habitually breaks loose despite the wealth of aerodynamics that you keep it pinned down. It also generally feels less connected and more unpredictable on the whole. That sense of oneness you attain with real cars is notably absent. That out of the way, despite the fact that Gran Turismo 7 doesn't make for a particularly great driving sim, doesn't mean that it doesn't make for a great driving experience. See, despite the fact that it lacks in driving detail compared to both iRacing and ACC, it clearly has a better game structure than both. iRacing doesn't really even have single player, outside of solo practice sessions and scattered AI races. ACC's idea of a campaign is just a bunch of strung together single races. GT7 has a proper career mode and structure for all kinds of players to follow through and get familiarized with the driving experience. In my opinion, GT7 has by far the best graphics engine of the three as well, and it's also the easiest to simply load up and get racing in. Often, you don't want to spend hours tweaking setups then jumping online to duke it out with the sweaties. You just want to get into your 911 RSR, load up a few dynamic races, and enjoy yourself. If that's covered under the umbrella of being the real driving simulator, then I suppose, in a way, Gran Turismo 7 kind of is. If, however, you're looking to brush up on your real-life driving skills, you may consider one of our other two contenders. Make sure to subscribe for more quote-unquote real sim racing content, and until the next one, I'll see you all later.